this is different. <laughs> uh -huh. We got the whole family. And we, we're taking a road trip. If you're at all familiar with this channel, you'll know that I usually camp and I only bring Gunther. But this time the whole family is going on this trip. The plan is to spend a few days in Denver with some stops along the way. And everywhere we go, the dogs are coming with us. Hey, Mom. This is Holland's car seat and his travel bag with all his stuff and a little blanket. So he's all set. And this is a whole area for the boys. Passenger side, I've got Gunther's car seat, um, his two, both of his backpacks, his front pack and his backpack, and a little uh, soft sided collapsible crate for the room in case we need it. Don't have any intention of leaving them in there, but just in case. Um, my bag of extra stuff, including his food and his rain jacket and hoodie and stuff. Water bottle, and we have like three more packed. In the back, we have, of course, our stuff over here. And this is the uh, dogger, the pet stroller. Um, inside, the portable evaporative cooler and a fan uh, in case we need them. And I can't see really behind it, but there's a blanket and a little travel dog bed um, for the hotel. Non-pet related, um, I set up this area for just emergency stuff. So that's our lantern, the Claris light, uh, fire extinguisher, and then in the cubbies, a battery jumper and a tire inflator with the battery on there. <laughs> Empty the fry tax. Uh oh, did you find it, baby? <laughs> Despite it being a busy holiday weekend, the staff at the Cosmopolitan were very kind and welcoming to us and the dogs. Come here, what do you think? Ready to go? I'll go for. I can't say a walk. We had no issues bringing them onto the casino floor, whether on leashes, in carriers, or in the stroller. We pretty quickly learned that the relief areas aren't much. The one at the Cosmopolitan was ripe in the late afternoon at 95 degrees. All right, the whole family. <laughs> Alan, you ready to go gamble, win some money? Yeah, you gonna be mom's lucky charm? Walking dogs on the strip is prohibited after noon, and who would want to? The pavement is hot and very crowded. Pushing the dogger on the strip was a challenge. Outdoor elevators were hard to come by, crowded, and kind of gross. However, early morning walks along the Bellagio Fountains were enjoyable. Finding a dog-friendly place to eat was tough. There are a few patios where they're allowed, but most had little shade and no misters. We ended up putting them in the stroller and visiting the food court in the hotel, and then just grabbing something to go. I guess since there's a Starbucks at street level, the Cosmopolitan did not feel the need to offer in-room coffee. If I have to get dressed, go down 24 floors, and walk through an entire casino to get my first cup of coffee, I am in a mood. Luckily, I had planned for just such a scenario. Well, 
About midway between Las Vegas and Moab is Beaver, Utah, and I scouted out a neat place for us to grab lunch. They even had a shady patio for the dogs. Well, the creamery was a total fail. It is Memorial Day Monday, and it is absolutely mobbed with people. So we bailed, hopefully find something outside of Beaver, Utah. Of course, Moab is known for all sorts of outdoor activities and natural wonders, but for us, it was more of a scenic and relaxing stop along the way. We chose this hotel because it's our style and they welcome dogs. Uh, you want to get in bed already? <laughs> Door, hotel room tour at Radcliffe. For quick potty times, there wasn't much available immediately outside of the hotel, other than a few patches of rock, but they did the job. In the evening and morning when it was cooler, we took them to a bark park and a lovely river sidewalk, just a couple blocks from the hotel. While there are some dog-friendly restaurants in town, we were so tired from the long drive and burned out from the sensory overload that is Las Vegas, we just wanted to eat in our room, maybe hang up a glass of wine, and relax. There was a pleasant little restaurant downstairs which offered their food to go. However, thanks to Utah liquor laws, not their wine. The rule is it had to be served with food. The hostess was wonderfully accommodating by pouring just a splash of wine for me to taste at the table and then loading up the rest of the bottle in an ice bucket to go. The Radcliffe was so close to offering a really good coffee experience. They had this high-end electric pour-over kettle and coffee in a tea bag format, but powdered creamer, which is a deal breaker for me. The real coffee nerds drink it black, but I am not one. <laughs> For the longest leg of our trip, we chose the Source Hotel and Marketplace located in the Rhino Arts District of Denver. Every time. <laughs> oh, it is coming down. such a nice hotel, in-room coffee was a big bummer. There was a pod brewer, but the pods didn't fit right, then it leaked all over the place, and the coffee tasted like doo-doo. And to boot, we got charged for using it. I ended up using my own gear for my first cup, and then heading downstairs for my second cup. For late night and early morning potty trips, there are a few landscaping beds right outside the lobby, including a cleanup station. For longer excursions, the Rhino Art Park and Arkans Promenade were just a couple blocks away.
Dogs were not allowed inside the marketplace or the restaurants at the hotel, but there were two patios where they could join us. Beyond the hotel, there were loads of options for dog-friendly patios within walking distance. The only restriction we ran into was finding places that offered food and were open on a Tuesday before 4 p.m. As it got closer to the weekend, the options really expanded. Pretty mountains in the distance and everything. like underneath the water yeah, when it makes those ripples. Reviews. Yeah. <laughs> a different one. I'm like, oh my god. Okay. We booked a room for sixty-five pound dog.
So although they have a restaurant on the premises, it's honestly unnecessary expensive for travelers staying for one night. $36 for one dish is not what I call worth it for what you get. For dinner, again, we were pretty exhausted and just didn't feel like venturing out. We were pleased to find that the lounge downstairs still allows pets, one of the few indoor options we encountered on our trip. Between 2 and 5 p.m., you can enjoy some tapas dishes and wine, and we made that our dinner. I just want to point out there's no USB ports, but you can connect to the LAN. <laughs> what are you boys doing? Yeah, well, I mean, we find one somewhere scenic. 